We've got the last part of tonight's show. We're going to talk about free speech and the free speech union, which has been started by professional provocateur Toby Young. The free speech union. This is their founding statement. Free speech is the bedrock on which all our other freedoms rest, yet it is currently in greater peril than at any time since the Second World War. The Free Speech Union is a non-partisan mass membership organisation that stands up for the speech rights of its members. If you think there's a risk to be penalised for exercising your legal right to free speech, that doesn't exist in Britain, whether it's the workplace or the public square, you need the protection of the Free Speech Union. How might we protect you? And then it lists a bunch of things. Basically, basically, if you find yourself being targeted by a digital outrage mob on social media for having exercised your legal right to free speech, we will mobilize an army of supporters. I mean, okay, that's kind of strange. Talks about petitions, about if you're no platform, how we can collectively respond. Um, if you're punished by your employer, give you legal assistance, etc. Basically, it's, it's providing, a, it's establishing a network for collective action for those who care passionately about free speech. We're now going to look at uh, an interview between Steve Edgington from The Sun, also works with Guido Fawkes sometimes. Didn't even know he was at The Sun. I thought he was at Guido still. He moved on from Guido very quickly. Yeah, he was also involved in some leave campaigning. So he's hardly a progressive voice. Steve Edgington and um, Toby Young. Uh, and let's see how quickly he embarrasses himself and reveals just how stupid this entire endeavour really is. Is Tommy Robinson in your free speech union? Would, he, would you allow him to come in? Well, Tommy Robinson hasn't applied um, to be in my union yet. Um, and I think that would be, again, a decision for the board and the advisory council rather than a decision for me. But I would say that um, uh, he's welcome to become a member of the union. Um, we have um, a statement of values um, and uh, we encourage our members uh, not to um, uh, criticise people in the course of making an argument um, for their membership of various uh, groups. So not to criticise them because they're a member of a particular ethnic group or a particular religious group or because they happen to be a woman or even because they happen to be a man. Um, uh, provided he'd be willing to um, uh, sign up to that statement of values, uh, then yeah, I think I think he I think we'd let him in. So don't be racist, don't be sexist, basically. Yeah, but uh, uh, do you think he has been? Do you think he said that those comments in the past? I think some of the comments he's made about Muslims um, uh, uh, cross the line. Um, Which ones? You know, he's he's uh, oh, I couldn't I couldn't pull anything out of my hat, but. Um, uh, the implication is that um, there, I think in the past, he has strongly implied that there is a direct causal link between being a Muslim and being a member of a grooming gang. Uh, that, that, that that's the context in which you have to understand those terrible crimes. And I don't think, uh, I don't think that's right. And I think that that borders on um, Islamophobia. What did you make of that, Joe? As, a, as an academic who's, you know, <laughs> your, your job is rigour and, you know, precision. What, what did you think of Toby Young's ar argument? Not particularly bulletproof, was it? Hmm. Where to start? I mean, I think that the, there's a big difference between you saying that your freedom of speech is being curtailed and people just not wanting to hear it. <laughs> um, I think that there's been so <clears throat> much um, mixing up of terms amongst uh, these debates I think, you know, if we link it back to um, academic freedom, for example, um, the academic freedom, as we understand it in the UK, um, comes from the 1997 uh, UNESCO. Uh, where they published clear recommendations on academic freedom. And it's not just the ability to say whatever you want and, and outrage people. What actually academic freedom within that document outlines is... Um, two recommendations for people and that is about concerning the self-governance of the universities that they work at and the right to criticize your own employer now if you think about other countries where that doesn't exist and you know whether that's a very right-wing government where you can get sacked for criticizing your employer <clears throat> um or that you know you, you you aren't able to regulate your institution um the idea that he manipulates that in the way that's you know being put forward by this union, I think it's quite disreputable actually. Um, and I think that you know if, if you think link this back to the disputes that UCU members are involved in, 
What we've seen um, before during previous strikes, so obviously often people take to Twitter to say what they think about their employer. Mm. That sometimes means criticising your employer. We have seen some instances where universities discipline academics um, for making those views when they've brought negative comments about their institution that they're bringing them into disrepute. Can you give me uh, any, any examples? Or I mean, obviously you can't verbatim, but kind of ballpark, what kinds of things are being said? So and- there were some some examples during the, the last USS strike in 2018 where um, UCU members who were on strike set up parody accounts that, you know, were not defamatory or anything, but just poked <laughs> fun at university managers with mm. paper-thin skin and they didn't like it. And there are instances where they were threatened with disciplinary procedures if they didn't delete things and if they didn't, you know, sort of toe the line. That is a real threat. And that's in the UK. You know, if you go to, to sort of other mm. countries um, where, where those restrictions, you know, and, and the, the, the protection of academic freedoms don't exist, you know, you can see um, people losing their jobs. But, you know, in the UK, you don't, if you're not an academic, you're not covered by academic freedom. So our members of UCU and professional services, you know, can't, can't fight back in the same way. But in addition to that, what we also see, and this is part of um, the broader criticism that we have of higher education, is punitive funding regimes where you have to align yourself with a particular type of research and that that then has to be favoured by the REF, which is a, a an audit of research, the abolition of tenure and casualization that impacts on your academic freedom if you have to toe the line in order to, um, you know, benefit from continuation of employment. All of these things actually impact on your ability to exercise academic freedom. Um, and you know, if we think about the prevent duty, hmm. um, that recently came came in into the news because what it revealed was that universities were acting in a really overzealous way and were reporting student essays to be investigated by the police um, that were, you know, flagged up as counter-terrorism. These are genuine attacks hmm. on people's academic freedom. You know, if you've got objectionable, bigoted views and people just don't want you to come to their event anymore... Hmm. I just don't even see that in the same league as what we're talking about, you know, particularly if you compare it to countries where, um, you know, academic freedoms lead to people being sacked by oppressive regimes. Um, So, yeah, I'm not really very impressed by that, I guess. Michael? Yeah, I suppose just to comment on the video. So that particular video has sort of started a bit of a, I mean, kind of interesting debate in a way on, on, on Twitter as to whether or not Toby Young in that explanation really undermined the point of his union and the debate is 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 clearly in that video he is accepting there should be some sort of political limits to freedom of speech or at least freedom of, or, or at least the right <clears> to be defended on twitter as that seems to be what this union is is designed to do um and that's seen as incoherent if what toby young's argument for is 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 for free, free speech absolutism basically so anyone should be able to say anything and we should completely remove politics and power and consequences from the discussion of speech now, including I'll, incitement? I mean, where does he draw the line well, here? So, well, so, so other people have responded to say that actually this free speech union isn't about free speech absolutism. Um, and so what what it is about is a concern that legitimate speech is being um, infringed upon. Um, not, not, not in terms of the, the police knocking on your door, but in terms of, you know, people being driven out of their jobs, et cetera, et cetera, which, I mean, could, could be a legitimate concern. But, but I think that the significant thing here is to say that what, what Toby Young definitely does do there is to say that it's a political decision where we limit what's acceptable to say not you know i think i think we all believe that that you should be allowed to say pretty much anything if it's not inciting violence before you know you get arrested or put in jail or something but in terms of what should it be acceptable to say and believe for you to be in a particular job so for example with sabisky who was the person who was mm-hmm. employed by dominic cummings <laughs> i don't think it should be illegal to talk about <clears throat> black people being genetically less intelligent than white people, even though I think it's complete pseudoscience and nonsense. But I do think that should make it inappropriate for you to have a job in the civil service or in the, in the highest <coughs> echelons of government. What, what this does show about Toby Young's project, though, is it is political where you yeah. draw this line. And what's clear about this free speech union is that they're not interested in free speech in general because everyone in it is a right winger. Everyone in it, the only time they've got in trouble is because they've said something <coughs> about... Um, trans women or they've said something about gender equality or they've said something that, that other people consider racist. There's no one in this free speech union on the, on the advisory board. And it's a huge list of, you know, the, the standard right wingers you see on, on TV and in, in you know, the, the, the comment pages of the Times. There's no one who's interested in, I mean, for example, the fact that there's Julian Assange is, is about to be extradited, whatever you think of him personally, he's a, someone who has published materials and is going to be <clears throat> extradited to America <laughs> 
for espionage and potentially put in prison. Well, we wouldn't be in prison for 175 years, but that would be the, the, the sentence he gets. These aren't people who are interested in the prevent program, which, as you were describing, means that some people mm-hmm. get and um, reported to the police for what they've written in their essays. And these aren't people who, who have ever cared about the Palestinian people's right to talk about racism in the creation of the state of Israel, which displaced them and their descendants because of their ethnic background. You know, and, and who get told, you know, that you can't keep your job or you can't keep your role in a political party because you, you're, you're, you're called anti-Semitic for that. So, so what Toby Young has to admit is that this is a political project and it's a political project specifically to allow people to say things which, you know, many black people consider racist to say things which many trans women consider transphobic and to say things which many women consider to be sexist. Nothing else. They're not concerned about things that those in power are telling us we cannot say because it will threaten their interest about that. They don't give a shit. 